I'm now thinking that we should have a look into the uh, what is called a reconstruction process um, how to convert a signal uh, from the digital domain a time discrete signal to the analog domain a time continuous signal and my uh, thinking is that I would like to keep this presentation to a level where it is possible to understand and follow it without having too much of knowledge of uh, Laplace and Fourier transform theory uh, so we are back again at our uh, case of an uh, of an uh, digital signal processing system having an, an uh, A to D converter on the input digital processing and then we want to reconstruct the signal from the time discrete uh, signal into a time continuous signal using the uh, reconstruction process and in this case it is modeled as a D to A converter and a reconstruction filter and this is maybe the most traditional way of recognizing the reconstruction process but now I would like to uh, take a step back and analyze this um, reconstruction process from the more basic level without assuming that we are actually using a D to A converter more into something that is called a pulse amplitude modulator PAM and uh, <coughs> On the input, we have a model of the, the sampler that we recognize from, from other presentations. And we have a time continuous signal uh, uh, that we are sampling and getting a time discrete uh, signal being a sequence of numbers. Uh, and this sequence of numbers is then fed into a pulse amplitude modulator. Uh, generating a pulse for each number and on the output we will get a, um, a time continuous reconstructed signal uh, y r of t and all of these signals can also be uh, analyzed and viewed in the frequency domain to analyze <coughs> what kind of frequency components that these signals actually contain yeah, and the time continuous signal is reconstructed by generating a series of pulses having amplitudes in proportion to the series of input discrete values. So it means that at any time the actual pulse will be proportional to the amplitude of uh, the number that is, is feeding into the PAM model, mm, modulator. And the time interval between the pulses are thus equal to the sample period of TS. The same sample period as you are using for the sampler. And this uh, uh, pulse amplitude modulating uh, process can be modeled in the time domain with a, something that is called a convolution. And in the frequency domain, it is simply modeled by uh, uh, multiplication. So it means that the output spectra will be equal to the input spectra multiplied with the spectra of the, the actual pulse that we are applying here. Now the question that we must ask ourselves is like how should uh, the pulse this the pulses how should they look like if we really want to reconstruct this input signal into y r of t uh, such that we have the minimum uh, amount of error What we see here is uh, first of all uh, on the upper graph is the spectra, uh, the frequency spectra of a sampled signal. And this is the spectra then of uh, the input signal before the sampler. And this, uh, the whole spectra here is the spectra that we get from, from the output of the sampler. And how can I say this? Yes, because I see that this spectra here is repeated by a period of the sampling frequency and this is typical uh, to what happens in the sampler according to this Poisson uh, summation formula. And then the reconstructed signal that we see here on the downside graph that will in the ideal case will be a copy of the spectra that we see here uh, that is centered around the origin. So how should the spectra of the pulse look like in order to 
reconstruct to have this spectra after a multiplication operation to look like this spectra yeah what i'm thinking about then is to apply an ideal uh, filter that has the uh, the cutoff frequency of fc and uh, fc should then then be designed such that it is larger than f0 uh, or less and and less than fs uh, minus f0 where fs is the sampling frequency and f0 is the the uh, uh, the bandwidth of the uh, actual signal that we are sampling on the input mm -hmm. so in, in that ideal case then it is possible to have the uh, the correct frequency spectra of the output signal which is an ideal case we have uh, developed an ideal model for the amplitude spectrum p of omega the pulse p of t uh, uh, but then uh, how will the actual pulse look like because this pulse uh, now it is shown in the the frequency domain so now we need to compute something that is called the reverse uh, free transform to analyze how should the pulse look like that will have the frequency content of that pulse that corresponds to to this content here and indeed such a pulse will have the look of of this uh, graph and this example is computed for a sampling frequency of 1 megahertz and fc uh, is equal to 100 kilohertz fc is then the uh, the cutoff frequency for this uh, for the pulse but then this pulse uh, it is something that we call a sync pulse and there is no circuitry there is no like electrical circuitry or, or made out of passive components resistors uh, inductors uh, capacitors or or any kind of, of um, amplifier that can actually generate this kind of pulse so i mean we have uh, studied an ideal case that is not really possible to realize in the real world so i would now like to come back to the real world again and have a look at the D to A converter using a D to A converter for the reconstruction and then I would like to use the same uh, model uh, as a, a pulse amplitude modulator but applied for the D to A converter and see what kind of uh, what kind of impact that will have so uh, we, pro we, we model again the process of the reconstruction but now as a D to A converter and we have the input signal in the time domain y of n and the output reconstructed signal y r of t and it can also be viewed in the frequency domain as we have been discussing before and reconstruction in the real world is done using this d to a converter this is something that we we know now and we have said but how well does this component reconstruct the original uh, signal y of t and we start this investigation by modeling the d to a converter as a pulse amplitude modulator PAM having a square shaped pulse P of T that is quite reasonable since um, during the sampling period and on the output of the D to A converter the amplitude will be uh, constant and it will be in proportion to the to the uh, level of the input number to the D to A converter <coughs> So we have the pulse amplitude modulator and we are applying a pulse that in the time domain looks like this. Be aware of that when we started the anal analysis of the uh, ideal case then we started with the pulse how it would look like in the frequency domain. But now we, what we know now of, about the D to A converter is how the pulse look like in the time domain. Like a square shaped pulse like this. And now we would like to analyze how this pulse actually look like in the frequency domain. So now we will apply uh, the free transform that is a method to analyze the frequency content of that pulse. So after this uh, free transform then the frequency content of this pulse will look something like this. And there will be um, a main lobe here 
in the center and then there will be a, a number of side lobes with decreasing amplitude as we reach infinity or minus infinity. This is referred to as a sync pulse. So this is from the previous slide and this is how it looks like in the real world. And this is how we started in the beginning for the ideal case that we wanted to have an, uh, um, an ideal filter, uh, a pulse in the frequency domain that looked like an ideal filter. So the difference in the real world uh, scenario uh, here compared to the ideal case how it looks like here. So what we need to know then uh, is uh, what additional things do we need here in order to uh, actually approximate the ideal ca case in the in the best way and uh, the recipe here is to apply a low pass filter a low pass filter that can uh, alternate the um, high frequency side lobes uh, and keep uh, the low frequency main lobe such that it will approximate uh, as much as ever possible the ideal case. So the difference are these areas that, uh, the main difference at least, that you have this side lobe that will contribute to a reconstruction error. This can be uh, intuitively understand or, or understood from, from comparing with how the, uh, the pulse should look like in the frequency domain in the ideal case. <coughs> So what we do then is that after the signal processing we apply the D2A converter and then we apply a low pass filter as the reconstruction filter. And now I would like to show you with a simple example. Uh, it's a simulation, MATLAB simulation about the reconstruction process and how the actual output signal will look like when we change the, uh, the uh, cutoff frequency of an uh, low pass filter used for, for uh, reconstruction. And the low pass filter is the first order uh, resistor capacitor RC uh, filter. It's the most simple possible. So have a look at this uh, flow graph of signal. Uh, we have uh, on the input the analyzing filter, the A to D converter and the digital signal processing. And then we have the reconstruction process with the D to A converter and a first order low pass filter. A first order low pass filter made out of uh, a resistor and a capacitor. And uh, then we are viewing the, the signal at two levels. Firstly, uh, directly out from the D to A converter and secondly, out from the the uh, low pass filter used for reconstruction. And we are then modeling a signal that has a 10 hertz, uh, it's a 10 hertz sine wave that comes out from the D to A converter. And you can see these typical uh, steps from the discrete levels of the D to A converter. And then using a low pass filter in this case with the uh, cutoff frequency of 159 hertz. And I think you can clearly see that uh, the edges here on the, the output from the D to A converter has been smoothened and uh, it is approaching and, and looking a little bit like more like a sine wave instead of uh, these pure steps. Uh, we can continue with lowering the uh, cutoff frequency to 32 hertz. And now you see that there is almost no variations at all uh, due to the uh, pulse amplitude modulator but still you can see some kind of uh, variations it's not like a perfect sine wave and we continue to lower it even to 11 hertz just one hertz uh, higher than the the uh, frequency of the signal that we want to pass and now I think it looks very, very smooth and very close to a sine wave, even though that we have these steps on the output of the D2A converter. And I think this example should pretty much uh, show you the whole idea behind this reconstruction filter also. Uh, we have just discussed uh, how to model uh, the ideal case of a reconstruction process. And 
In second phase, we were discussing and comparing with using the DE to A converter and the low pass filter for reconstruction. And I think uh, uh, from this comparison, we can also conclude that nevertheless, how good we design our uh, low pass filter in combination with selecting the uh, sampling frequency and, and the D to A converter for the reconstruction. We can never uh, eliminate the reconstruction error completely. We will still have a small amount of reconstruction error. Uh, so I think this was the main message uh, behind this presentation today. And it, I, was, I was trying to keep it at, at a simple level so it could be understood without having too much of knowledge from uh, Laplace or uh, free transform theory. So thank you for your attention.